let's say that we have a storm out at sea. At some point in time and, and in space, there's a perturbation which is going to generate waves, a wind gust of some sort, which is going to generate waves which will propagate in the direction that the wind was, was gusting. And the waves, as they propagate away from this perturbation, uh, we know that if we're in deep water, we know that they will disperse. They disperse, they disperse laterally. Um, they also disperse in the direction of propagation. And we've seen that because we know, remember, deep water waves are dispersive. So the long waves travel faster than the short waves, right? So you'll have long waves going up quick, quicker, and the short waves will arrive later. So we have two effects there. We have an effect whereby we have this separation of, of wavelengths as the waves propagate away from the perturbation. The energy density of the wave will diminish as the wave propagates away because it propagates out laterally as well. Okay. Um, and so you might ask yourself, what if you're standing at the shore, right? And um, you know that something has happened out to sea. The storm has happened out at sea, and you want to work out uh, when it happened and how far away it is. And all you can do is stand at the shore and look at the waves. Can you work it out? Right? Knowing what you know about the dispersion properties of deep water. Well, yes, you can. You can um, think about the speed at which um, the crests and the troughs arrive at the beach and you can tell you, you can say to yourself well the distance to that storm we'll call it big L and the time since it happened the time since that wave set off we'll call it T little t and the speed the phase speed is C right so obviously T is big L over C we also know that the wave period is lambda over C where lambda is the wavelength all right so we can combine these two things and we also know from the dispersion relation for deep water that the phase speed is root g over k all right so we can form the product time times period so that's the time since the storm times the wave period so it's the product of these two things so it's 2 pi l over k c squared and we can substitute from here for c squared so we get 2 pi l over g all right and we can rearrange that to to get an expression for the period of the waves, which is tor equals 2 pi L over G times T. Now, that doesn't appear to be very helpful, does it? Because you don't know L and you don't know T. So you've got, well, you could stand there with your watch, right, at the beach and time the period of the waves. You see a wave come in, you press the stopwatch, wait till the next one comes in, or maybe do 10, just to get some precision, okay? And now you know the wave period. You can measure it at the beach. What do you do with that? Well, you can't work out T without knowing L, and you can't work out L without knowing T. So you've got one equation in two unknowns. So what do you do? Bit of a conundrum. Anyone got any bright ideas? Well, when, you, when you're faced with a problem like that, I find that the best thing to do is just go to the pub and have a beer, all right? Uh, because when you come back, you might find that you have the solution. So you go to the pub, have a couple of beers, all right? Spend an hour or two there. And you come back, and you're right, I'll have another go. I'll, I'll, um, I'll time the waves again. So when you time the waves again, what, what do you find? Is there any difference in your measurement? Apart from precision, you might have a bit less precision, but... but um, what else are you going to notice? And remember, this is dispersive waves in deep water. So the long waves, with the lower frequencies, they will come faster. And then later on, the short waves will arrive with a higher frequency. So you might find that before your little break, you had a lower frequency. And then when you come back, you might find a slightly higher frequency. So now, you've got two values for tor, all right? Two frequencies. And so you've got two equations, and so you can work it out. The distance to the original perturbation and the time since it happened. We're assuming that the perturbation is some kind of point thing which happened 
at a particular point in time at a particular position and then stopped. All right. Um, so that I mean, you can time you can time the wave periods several times over a sufficient interval, and you can measure the distance to the storm. In principle, of course. I mean, there's a few caveats with that. It's a little bit simplified. We're assuming that we can follow a single wave crest all the way from the storm to the to the shore. We know really that waves travel in packets, so you might want to do the same thing with the group speed and see see what that gives you.